Hey, welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hearts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark. I'm so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, a pen, a paper, your phone, however you want to take notes and get ready for today's message. Love the message. Hana Hayao Le Ahodo Dat Marlan Ina Natu Mashiha Bara de Haleha Anea Na Good So many times during Easter in this season of the year, we watch movies kind of like this one or The Passion of the Christ, where seven-eighths of the movie is about Jesus' life, him getting arrested, him getting beat up, him being tortured, hung on, hung on the cross, and dying. And then literally we give 10 seconds to a stone rolling away, 10 seconds to celebrating that he's alive, that he rose from the dead. Here's the truth. If the story ended at the cross, then the idea of Christianity was a failure. Listen to what I'm saying. Christianity would have ended in a failure if the story ended at the cross. If Jesus died on the cross and stayed dead, this whole thing is worthless. He died in vain. The power of Christianity, now hear me, this is going to rattle your mind a little bit. The power of Christianity does not lie in the fact that Jesus died for you. That's not the power. Because other religions, people died for people. Martyrs died for people. Martyrs died for their faith. 
The power doesn't lie in the fact that Jesus died for you. The power of Christianity lies in the fact that Jesus rose from the dead for you and that he's alive forevermore, seated at the right hand of the Father, forever making intercession for us. The resurrection had such a tremendous effect on the entire world, so much so that modern history separates two errors of time by two sets of letters, one called BC, which is before Christ, and AD, Anno Domini. I'll give you that one because many people don't know that one. Jesus is in the center of that. Before Christ, Anno Domini. Jesus is there in the middle. Did you know, fun fact, they're trying to get rid of BC? They're trying to get rid of BC. They're trying to make it CE. In fact, some of my books that I'm reading use CE in it. And CE means current events. Current events. But what was the current event that caused the time split? Jesus Christ. So listen, I'm not the person who wants to like go on social media and blast historians of what they want to do. Whatever. You do whatever you want. But you're not going to stop me from doing and saying what I want. Come on, somebody. So listen, you want to call it CE? That's fine. Then for me, it simply means Christ's entry. All right? Christ's entry. There you go. Teach your kids that. Let them get expelled from school for saying that. I love it. Historian J.R. Case made this statement. It's not just... The the resurrection of Jesus is not just an important event in history. It is the central event in history. The fulfillment, listen, the fulfillment of a process that began in the accounts of Genesis in which God sets about to redeem a broken and fallen world that is marred by sin. It's the central turning point of what something that God started back in Genesis when Adam and Eve ate of the fruit and sinned and fell. God said, I'm enacting my plan. And B.C., right there, B.C. A.D. was the turning point, the central event of history. So what are the implications? What are the implications? That's today's sermon title is this, Implications. An implication is defined as a possible future effect or result. A future effect or result. The fact or state of being involved in or connected to something. So here's my question. If Jesus Christ was real, if he really died on the cross, if he really rose again, then what are the implications? Right? Because an implication means that we need to respond to this. There needs to be a response from us if these things are true. What are the implications? What are the possible future effects and results of the truth that Jesus Christ is alive? I want to take the next few minutes and look at a not-so-Easter passage of the Bible, okay? The topic is going to be Easter-ish, but after 28 years of preaching Easter sermons, I preach everything about the wood that Jesus hung on to the kind of nails that we've pierced with, and I've preached it all. I have nothing else. I don't know what else to preach about it. But today, I want to go in a different direction. I want to look at John eleven seventeen. John eleven seventeen. This is a story where Jesus' best friend, Lazarus, has died. Watch this. Now, when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. Now listen, Jesus knows that his boy is sick. He knows that he's dying. He's two miles away. But he couldn't be bothered to stop and come take care of his boy. Two miles. That's wild, right? So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, now Martha, she's confrontational, right? So she's going to go confront her pain. She's going to go confront the source of her pain. So Martha heard Jesus was coming out, so she went out to meet him. But Mary, 
She's the emotional type, like the cryy type. She shuts down. She stayed at home in the house, seated. <laughs> if Jesus loved me, he would have come. Martha comes up, says to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. You know she had some kind of attitude. You know she was talking with her hands. He would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, he will give you. Jesus says to her, your brother will rise again. Your brother will rise again. Now, you ever talk to somebody that doesn't let you talk? Huh? They talk right back over you. They don't even listen to what you try to say because they know what you're trying to say and they, and they know you're stupid. Huh? Yes? Listen, when someone talks over you, they think you're stupid. Just FYI, okay? <laughs> Jesus says, your brother will rise again. I know he will. Not even letting the dude talk. Let him talk. I know he'll rise again in the last days of the resurrection. She's like, woman, I'm trying to tell you something. I'm trying to tell you, I know you're hurting right now. I know you're in pain and you're talking out of your pain. But if you would just shut up for two seconds, I'm trying to do a miracle. I'm literally trying to do a miracle and you won't shut your mouth. Huh? I wonder if maybe today in our lives, God finds himself in that same kind of situation with us. You've already Googled all your problems. And so you're trying to tell God how bad it is. And he's like, oh, if you would just shut up for two seconds. I'm trying to do a miracle in your life. I'm trying to set things up for you. If you would just stop telling me how bad it is, I see how bad it is. Just sit back. Listen to what I'm about to tell you. Martha's talking about he will rise again when the trumpet sounds. She's trying to say, I read the book. I read, what, I read the stories that you wrote us. That there will be a day when the trumpet sounds and the dead of Christ shall rise and we remain will be called to meet him in the clouds. I know all this, Jesus. He says, woman, I am the resurrection and the life. Do you know what he's saying here? He's saying, I am the alpha and the omega. I am the beginning and the end. I am that resurrection that you're talking about, but I'm life right now. I'm life right now. I'm trying to do a miracle for you right now. I'm trying to bring those dead things back to life again right now. I wonder if there's something in your life that has died that needs to come back to life. And if you would just get out of Jesus' way, he's trying to do a work in your life. Maybe there's a dream that you let die that Jesus is trying to revive. Come on, somebody. He says, I'm the resurrection and life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, he shall live, and everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. And then he asks her this question, do you believe? What do you believe, Martha, since you got all the answers? Do you believe? She says, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And I think she kind of said it like this, yes, Lord, I believe that you're the Christ and the Son of the living God. Because that whole I am the resurrection life, he's like, bam, that's it. That's, like, that's the trump card, right? That's the trump card. You know, you know you got trump cards in your life. When you play that card, that's it. Conversation's over. At your job, your employer walks in, I'm the boss around here. That's it. It's over. Conversation's done. You can't say nothing. He played the trump card. She's like, I am the resurrection of life. Do you believe it? Yes, Lord. I believe. In some stories, in some movies, you've seen it. The hero or the villain, they're attacked, they're stabbed, they're shot, and they're presumed dead. But then the person comes back and is like, all right, the dead body's right here. <gasps> Wait a second, it's gone. Dun, dun. And then the guy who's the villain, he's still got the knife in his back. He comes out of nowhere, pop, 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 pop. Oh, that's not this story. That's not this story of Jesus. That's not the story of what he's saying here. I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus is not just a dead hero or a dead martyr. 
He is a living God. That's what separates Christianity from any other religion. That's what separates it, is that Jesus rose from the dead. Now, I can understand the story of Lazarus. Jesus then says, hey, Lazarus, come on out. And Lazarus gets up, walks out the tomb. That Jesus had all authority and all power, and he called life back into the dead, and Lazarus comes forward. But what I cannot grasp in my mind is how Jesus rose from the dead. No one called him forth. No one was outside his grave. So I'm making this up. This is my philosophy of what happened, okay? Because this stuff gets up on TikTok and then I get blasted. Disclaimer, here's my philosophy, my theology. Jesus dies on the cross. The Bible says that he gave up the ghost. And I believe that he separated himself, he separated his spirit from his body. So I don't believe that he ever died. He just left his body, right? Because he was always eternal. He will always be eternal. He has always been and he will always will be, right? So he separated himself from his body. His body went to the tomb, but he went down to hell. The Bible says that he whooped up on the devil, made a display of him openly, took the keys of death, hell, and the grave, jumped over the chasm into Abraham's bosom, led all of those who died in faith, never receiving the promise, to eternity, to eternal life, and he rose victorious. Now, here's what's cool. What I think happens is that Jesus then steps back into his body, which means he rose himself from the dead. He rose himself from the dead. This fulfills all of the things that he says. I'm the resurrection and I'm the life. I can raise myself from the dead by stepping back into my body. Yo, that's just, that's some sci-fi stuff. All right. Easter is not about celebrating another fallen hero but realizing and celebrating that Jesus is still alive, seated at the right hand of the Father, forever making intercession for you and I. But let's take a look at this verse in John eleven twenty five. 25. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet he shall live. So he's talking about two dimensions of us. We are a spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a body. So he's saying, although the body may perish, the spirit is now alive unto God. The spirit will live forever. Yet he shall live, and anyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Jesus, for those of you that like Bible school teachings, Jesus is teaching on his eschatology. Eschatology. Eschatology is the theology or the study of the end of things, the end of time. So Jesus is telling us here, his eschatology, his theology of the end times concerning death, the judgment, and the resurrection. Jesus, his claim here is mind-boggling. He's saying that it is faith in him that brings one back to life at the resurrection at the last day. Then he says, and basically what he's saying is, he is the ground of eschatological hope. I'm I'm not trying to get too deep. I'm just saying he is the ground on which we have a hope in eternal life. But he goes beyond that. He's not just saying, I am the hope of the end of all things. And I'm just going to say, most people that go to church, they do so because of the hope of the end of their life. When I'm dead, I want to make sure I go to heaven. And we're kind of playing the long game, right? I just, I go to church or I say I'm a Christian or I believe in Jesus for the end hope, for the eschatology for what's gonna happen at the end of times. But then Jesus switches it. 
He says, I'm not just the end times. I am the right now. I am the resurrection, but I'm also life. I'm the life right now. I'm a hope right now. Come on, somebody. It's the idea of already and not yet. He has already come. He has already made a way. He has already become our atonement, our sacrifice, our replacement, our redeemer. But we have not yet experienced his final return. We have not yet experienced the millennium. So it's already begun, but things have not yet occurred. And he says, do you believe? Do you believe that I am the resurrection but I'm alive. Do you, do you believe from here forward? Do you believe? And no one can make you believe, but the author John Parnell explains this. He says that the resurrection demands a response. He says there are implications that cannot be ignored. Through the resurrection, God has created a new humanity in Christ. He says this, the Christian gospel is not just a story to be read, but a story to be lived. Wow. And so the simple question today, are you living the Christian story? Not merely looking at a cross, but what are the implications of the resurrection? If Jesus is really alive, if he's really alive, then living things need relationship. You don't have relationship with dead things. See, this is why we could not have a relationship with the law. Moses gave us the 10 commandments, but there's no relationship with stones. Stones are cold, they're hard, they're rigid. But a living God, a, a God that came to earth and experienced suffering, experienced suffering like we experience, and then gave us freedom and a hope and a future, rose from the dead and is alive and always involved in my life, that demands, the implications of that, it demands a relationship a relationship. And as grateful as I am that you're here today and stepping forward and making a commitment to come out and seeing Jesus on Easter, it demands more than a once a year visitation to him. It demands that there's a part of your life, the life, he says, I am the life. What does the Christian life look like? What does it feel like? What does it sound like? Simply having a hope for a resurrection one day, I'm gonna tell you, it's not gonna give you the Christ life that you should be living today. He says when you put the things in the right order, there's love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, self-control, all these things become part of the Christian life. Now, I'm gonna tell you this. I'm probably one of the most down-to-earth, real people. I know that the shirt's a little loud today. I didn't pick it out. I understand. <laughs> I'm not some weirdo, super spiritual person. But I'll tell you this, I promise you this, I could not make it through life without Jesus in my life. I'd be a hot mess, I'd be wrecked without each day taking a little bit of time and getting my focus set right. And I do that with him, I do that through him, right? 
I would say starting out, starting out in creating this relationship with God, download the YouVersion Bible app, put it on your phone. They've got Android and Apple, so you got no excuse. And then go into the Bible studies or the devotionals. And you can download or subscribe to any devotional that applies to something in your life. And you can even set reminders. You can have it remind you to do that thing every day. You can set that up and begin a consistent relationship with Jesus. But maybe you're here today and you're like, I don't even know about this. I've never even started this walk. Or maybe you have started this walk, but it's been a very long time since you've even talked to God. Listen, here's what I love about God is that he doesn't make us start over. He doesn't make us start over. We don't have to start from the beginning and get saved all over again and then work our way back to where we were. He, he, he puts us right back where we are. He says, just jump back into this relationship with me. Jump back into the Christian life. And maybe this Easter, 2023, is that year that you jump back in. You say, listen, I need to get things right. Not only do I need to get back to the gym, wink, wink, but I need to get back into the things of God. It's been long enough. So if you're watching online and you're in the room and you need to take that next step and make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, we'd love to pray a prayer with you today. It's called the prayer of salvation and pretty much it's this. Romans 10, 9, and 10 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. He says, you shall have this resurrection. You do those things, you can have the resurrection. So with the heart, man believes, woman believe. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So it starts with a belief. I believe Jesus Christ is Lord. From there, we confess it with our mouth. How do we do that? Through a prayer. And that prayer goes just like this if you would join me. Even if you are a Christian, you've given your life to Jesus Christ, would you help support those around you and pray this with me? Dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks for watching today's message. My name is Pastor John Mark, and if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. We want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is to take your next step in your journey. We'd love to help you do that, and you can head over to FamilyChurchNY.com or email us at team at FamilyChurchNY.com to get started today.